Good afternoon, Melbourne time world. I am excited for this video because I'm going to give you my five favorite non-salesy sales questions that are going to help you close more prospects when you're in a sales conversation. These questions are really, really good at helping the person that you're speaking with understand that they need to work with you to get the results that they want. Okay, it's not about selling, it's not about pushing, it's not about being aggressive, it's just about helping them understand that at the end of the day, there's something holding them back, there's a gap between where they are and where they wanna be, and that you can fill that gap with your services. You have the answers to their problems, you have the solutions, and you have it all packaged up in a nice little deal for them to become your client. So let's jump straight into it. The first question that I love asking is is the intention is to bring people to an emotional place. So when we think about decision making, humans make decisions based on two things, logic and emotion. Not just logic, not just emotion, a combination of the two. So a lot of people are afraid to take the sales, sales conversation emotional, right? They'll keep it in the logical aspect. They'll keep it in the realm of logic. Results, results, results. This is what we can do. This is what we can do. This is what we can do. What we need to do is we need to bring that prospect into the emotion. We need to take it down a notch into the emotion and ask them, what does it mean for them to get results? Sean, long time, bro. Good to see you on here. So a question that I love asking. When you're asking a lot of questions about their business and where it is that they want to go, I want you to ask this question. If in 12 months, you don't get the results that you're telling me about that you want right now, what would that mean for you? Get the prospect thinking about what it would mean for them if they didn't get the results in 12 months. If they went a whole nother year, put them 12 months into the future. If they went a whole nother year without getting the results that they're trying to get, the results that you can provide for them, by the way, what would that mean for them? Would they be frustrated? Would they be annoyed? Would they be sad? Would they be angry? Find out what emotions they would be feeling if they don't get those results. Take the conversation into an emotional place. And you're a business owner yourself, so you can relate to all of that. You can be like, yeah, I totally get it. Totally get it, that's, yeah. I would be the same, totally understand that. Be there for them as well. Help them understand that you are a human being. Take the conversation into an emotional place to show them that you're human and that you understand them and to get a better idea of what it actually means for them to get the results that they wanna get. If you can get them clear on the emotions that they would be feeling if they don't get the results, you're creating a bigger gap between where they wanna be and where they are right now. The desire to fill that gap heightens and you're the person that has the solution for them. Second question is a really, really simple one. After you've gone through the process of asking them you know, a bunch of questions about their business, where they are now, where they wanna be, ask this question, go, hey, let me ask you a question. What's holding you back? That's it, keep it open. Let them answer it. They're going to reveal to you exactly what you need to know. Instead of trying to assume what they need from you, instead of trying to assume what you need to sell them, ask them what's holding them back. They may say it's a personal thing, it's a mental thing, maybe they'll say it's a sales thing, maybe they'll say that they don't get enough qualified leads. If you're a digital marketer and you're talking to someone and you ask that question, they're probably gonna frame it from a marketing perspective. If you're a coach, if you're a mindset coach, and you ask that question, they're probably gonna frame it in a, in a mentality kind of way, in an emotional way. So whatever job you have, whatever offer that you have, whatever service that you cater for, if you ask that question, what's holding you back? The person will answer the way that they need to answer for you to get a little bit more information about this person, for you to understand them on a deeper level. Okay, so what's holding you back is a really, really useful question. The third question is, once you've got clear on what the vision is that they want, once you've asked them what, they're, what is actually holding them back, what you say to them is this, you go, look, I love it. Awesome results that you wanna get, but you know to get those results that things need to change, yeah? Ask the question. You know to get those results that things need to change, yeah? And it's about tonality here. To get those results, you know that things need to change, yeah? So you're just asking as a human. 
This isn't a salesy question. They're not going to be like, oh, this has been scripted. If you ask it with the right tonality, then it's just one human being asking another human being for them to acknowledge that things need to change. If they keep doing things the way that they're doing, they're going to get the same results. What is it that Albert Einstein quote? You know, insanity is doing the same thing time and time and time again and expecting a different result. This question just highlights the fact that they need to take action. Whether or not it's with you is not the point. They just need to take action to get better results. So you ask the question, you know that to get those results, you know, you told me you want to make a hundred grand in a year. That's awesome. But you know, to get there, that things need to change. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Boom. You've created that authority. You've created that credibility. People are like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 nah. Call me out totally. Things need to change. And the change is you. Okay. So that's the third question. The fourth question, this is a really powerful one. So towards the end of the conversation, you've added a whole bunch of value. And I've got a whole sales structure, by the way, that tomorrow I'm going to do a video on like all of my steps in my sales conversation. So you're going to know exactly um, how to piece this all together. But a really, really great question is, um, look, you say it like this, you frame it like this. Look, I'm hundred percent certain that I can help you. I know I can help you. My only concern is that you're not committed to this process. If we enter this process, I need a commitment from you that you're going to do what I say, that you're going to actually take action, that you're going to close those leads that I provide for you, that you're going to start the daily meditations, that you're going to, you know, whatever it is that you kind of do. You ask them for commitment, get them to commit. And the response will be like, oh yeah, totally. No, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm committed to this product. Like I want to make change. I want to make change. You know, so you're, you're getting them to think about already what it's like to be working with you and for them to go, yes, I am committed to this process. So you're getting a micro commitment. You're getting people to commit to you before they've even committed to you. So that's a really, really useful question. And the final one is a question that I love asking during the close. Now, for this question to be asked, you need to work out two things. You need to work out how much they stand to make by working with you. So if you're a digital marketer, it's easy. Work out how much that they're going to make if you get them the leads that they want. If it's a mindset thing, you know, work out exactly what it is that they want to achieve and really get clear on that ultimate goal. You need to know what their motivation is. And the second thing you need to know is your prices and your packages. Know your pricing and your packages prior to the sales conversation. Don't send proposals. Don't get, go, I'll email you afterwards. Just know your prices, know your packages, so then you can pro propose your prices on the spot. This is where we get maximum return on our sales calls is by having that confidence and certainty in our own services. Know your pricing. That's a little side thing. But this is how the question goes. So you get to the end, you know that someone wants to turn their business into a 20K a month business and your service is 3K a month, right? Let's just say that's the situation. So you ask this question, you go, hey, look, if we're able to get you, your business to a point where it's making 20K a month and I only charge 3K a month, would that be fair? So you ask the question, would that be fair? So you're no longer, you're no longer asking them to make a commitment. You're now just asking for them to comment on the validity of the offer. Would that be fair? And you, the answers are going to be one of the two things. It's going to be either, yeah, that's fair. Well, I mean, always it's going to be fair because the amount that you can make for a business or create for someone is always going to be less or more than the amount that you're going to charge them, right? So it's always going to be fair, but the answer is going to be one or two things. It's going to be, yeah, that would be fair, but, and then they're going to have an objection and then you can deal with those objections or they're going to go, yes, that's fair. Let's freaking do this. Let's get started because you've asked all those questions up to that point. You've created that, that desire for your services. You've created that gap between where they are and where they want to be. You know what's holding them back. They're committed to you and they know that it's fair to work with you. That's how you're going to start closing more sales. So go through this video again, write down all of those questions, start trying them, watch my video tomorrow, which is going to be all about the actual sales structure. So how to piece all of this together. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you're watching this replay, hashtag team replay in the comments. Let's do this people. You guys are all legends. Peace.